Welcome to the magic of math, where we master math one video at a time. My lesson today is on multiple transformations. This is actually the fourth video lesson in a series on linear transformations. The first video was on horizontal and vertical translations. The second was on reflections in the X and Y axis. And the third was on vertical and horizontal stretches and shrinks. So today we're going to put all three of those types of transformations together and learn about applying them in the correct order. So there's our objective. We will be able to identify and perform multiple transformations to linear functions. And here's what I'd like you thinking about. In what order do you apply transformations to a linear function? So like a lot of things in math, order matters. So transformations of graphs, when we have linear function, it can be transformed by translations, reflections, stretches, or shrinks. So in our first video, I taught you that a parent function of a linear function is the line y equals x or f of x equals x, and that all other linear functions are transformations of that parent function. We use function notation and we can compare the functions to determine the specific types of transformations that were applied. We start out with our function f, and we have two forms of a function that has transformations applied to it. The difference between the two that we're going to talk about today is our factor a, our constant, could be inside the parentheses affecting the inputs or outside the parentheses affecting the outputs. So understanding function notation is going to be key in identifying the types of transformations applied to a linear function. So we're going to start first by identifying h, which is always inside the parentheses. So just like order of operations, the first thing we're going to do when we talk about application is look inside these parentheses at this constant h. And it describes a horizontal translation. If h is greater than 0, then the function is translated h units to the right. If h is less than 0, then the function is translated h units to the left reminding you that this formula is subtract h. So if this was x subtract 2, h would have a value of 2 and go to the right. If this was x plus 2, h would be negative 2 and translate to the left. Now that we've reviewed h, let's move on to a. And if a is inside the parentheses, we'll talk about a outside in a second. A inside, that constant A, describes a stretch or a shrink. If it is inside the parentheses, then the function is a horizontal stretch or shrink. And we look at A, and this one's very important. It's the reciprocal of what you would think. So if A here was 1 half, so between greater than 0 and less than 1, and inside, then it's a stretch because the factor is the reciprocal when it's inside. So if this was 1 half, the factor would be 2. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2, making it a horizontal stretch. If a were 2, that is greater than 1, but the factor is the reciprocal of 1 half, making it a horizontal shrink. Now let's talk about a being multiplied to our value, our output here of our function x. That makes it a stretch or a shrink, but now it's outside, so it's a vertical stretch or shrink. And this one, as, as you would expect, if a is greater than 0 and less than 1, and outside the parentheses, then it is a vertical shrink by the factor of a. If a is greater than 1 and outside the parentheses, then it is a vertical stretch by a factor of a. If a is negative, then we have a reflection. So if a is inside the parentheses and negative, then it's a reflection in the y-axis. And if a is negative and outside the parentheses, then it is a reflection in the x-axis. And last but not least, we have our constant k outside the parentheses, representing a vertical translation. And if k is greater than 0, then it's translated up k units. And if k is less than 0, the function is translated k units down. So now that we've reviewed all our types of transformations and how they are noted in function notation, let's talk about 
order and how we apply these types. Step one, we're going inside the parentheses always first, and we're looking to see if there is a subtract H or add H to determine if the graph has been horizontally translated. Step two, we're looking inside if there's an A or outside if there's an A, and we're going to stretch or shrink our function second. Step three is to note whether or not A was negative. If it was, then we need to reflect our function third step. Fourth and final step is to look outside the parentheses and see if we're going to vertically translate up or down. So I hope you'll pause the video here and write down these four steps to have these orders. We translate, stretch or shrink, reflect, and translate vertically. So just to note, they're not all necessary. Sometimes you'll do steps one and three. You might do two and three, two and four. You might do all four of them, but this is the order that you would look to do them. Now I want to model one for you. We're going to graph these functions f and g and then describe the transformation. So I'm going to do this in an orderly fashion and then show you how you could have jumped and understood it. But you're going to use the order to help describe. So first we're going to graph f, which is has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1, so there it is. Step 1, there's nothing in our parentheses, so it is not necessary. Step 2, there's nothing inside, but we're coming out. We have this factor a of 3, so that means we're going to vertically stretch off our function f, which means you're going to multiply the outputs of function f by 3, or you can multiply 3x and get this line. So I can graph passing through the y-intercept is 0, rise 3, run 1, so graph that line. Or you could take your outputs here. Output 1, 1 would be 1, 3. 2, 2 would turn to 2, 6 if I'm multiplying the outputs by 3. Either method what works. Step 3, a is negative, so now I'm going to reflect it in the x-axis. So again, you can multiply all the outputs by negative 1, or we can go up here and say 1, 3 reflects over the x to 1, negative 3, and this would reflect over, so up. So I'm going to take out my purple step 2 function. Now, after graphing my stretch and my reflection, this is my pink line, and I have one more step. Step 4 is I'm going to vertically translate the graph down. So I could physically take any point on it. All points on this line are going down. So I'm going to have a y-intercept of negative 2 and still have a slope of 3. So negative 3, sorry. And so here we have it. We've subtracted 2. So in slope-intercept, our function g is negative 3x subtract 2. Let's take away our second, our third step here and look. Negative 2, rise 3, run negative 1. So there we have our function g. Now let's describe this. The graph of g is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, a reflection in the x-axis, and it's vertically translated down two units. Now it's your turn. I'm not going to ask you to graph it, but I'm going to ask you to describe it and pay attention to your order. So go ahead and pause now, write down your description, and come back and hit play to check your work. Welcome back. So inside the parentheses, our first thing is we notice that this graph of G is a horizontal stretch by a factor of four. Remember, you need to find the reciprocal. And it has been vertically translated up three units. So A was inside making a horizontal stretch. It was positive, so it was not a reflection and there's nothing being added or subtracted, so there's no horizontal translation. So we have a horizontal stretch and a vertical translation up. Try this one. Go ahead and pause, write down your description, come back to check it. Welcome back. So we have first inside our graph of G is a horizontal translation, two units to the left, because this would be negative two. And we go outside, we have a vertical shrink by a factor of one third, and it has also been vertically translated up one unit. One more for you. Go ahead and pause, write your description, and come back to check your work. 
Welcome back. So the graph of G, horizontal translation three units to the right. It is a horizontal shrink by a factor of one half, a reflection in the Y axis because it's inside, and it's been vertically translated down five units. I'd like to thank you today for joining me on learning about how to apply multiple transformations to a linear function. And I hope you'll come back and join me again soon here at The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Have a great day.